Hey there, Myth Junkies, and welcome back, TV Huggers. It's Mama Mythos here, and we're about to drown ourselves in the history and lore surrounding flood myths. If you're as crazy about mythology as I am, be sure to like this video because you know you wanna, subscribe to this channel because you know you're gonna, and share this video with your family and friends because you know you gotta. Well, not really, but you better. Now, hold your breath and ride the waves of this great deluge of lore and mystery. But first, I'm gonna have to state the longest disclaimer ever just going over the general topics of what we're covering and what we're not covering. First off, if you're accustomed to the idea that the only flood story comes from the Bible, you're wrong. The story down to its bare bones came from the second millennia BC. Spoiler alert for you creationists far and wide. We'll be discussing a handful of flood myths, from Noah's Ark to the Epic of Gilgamesh to Zeus having a temper tantrum and others. Giant floods have been the cornerstone of creation, recreation, and destruction within the earliest civilizations and religions of our time, normally due to the human race causing creator's remorse and being too naughty. They are even isolated by African and Native American tribes. It goes without saying that this is a controversial topic as far as its legitimacy and historical accuracies of an actual worldwide flood ever happening. Some say that very large floods really did happen based off of archaeological and geological evidence of flooding in particular areas where flood myths originated and serious questions are raised. However, it is still one of the biggest mysteries of mankind. You will find that most of these myths were known to have started within areas nearby large bodies of water that would flood seasonally or regularly depending on rainfall or glacial melting and plays some part as to whether or not it's truly as big as depicted in these epic stories. Were they truly big enough to wipe out an entire human race? The possibility is there if the flood also wiped out crops and killed livestock and caused fatal injuries, as most floods do. Metaphorically speaking or otherwise, are they a real thing? Well, I don't plan on going over every example of evidence and debate about this topic, but I will provide enough information to keep you curious and include in the description below my sources and who you should really follow in terms of the true science behind ancient floods from notable geologists and archaeologists who actually wrote books and dedicated their life's work to these discoveries. And no, it isn't information to prove that there was really an ark or to defend any literal concept behind a biblical flood. The footage and video sources we're using is from different movies that feature catastrophic floods, tsunamis, and of course, Russell Crowe as Noah. That sexy beast of a man is going to make me have to air dry myself after this. Okay, finally we can get on with some storytelling. I will be summarizing each tale and leaving the sites that provided the full story as a source in the description below. Let's start with the Epic of Gilgamesh, the earliest example of a great deluge causing mass culmination of the humans created by the gods. The stories of Gilgamesh were transcribed on large clay tablets. It remains in pieces now, only some remain lost or destroyed. This is tablet number 11. This is the ancient Sumerian flood myth. Throughout his own epic story, Gilgamesh is basically on a search for eternal life. On his journey, he meets Utnapishtim, a man who is given eternal life as a gift from Enlil, after he survived the great flood. Utnapishtim tells Gilgamesh of this flood, and how he came about eternal life. The god Ea told him to build a great boat with very precise dimensions that was sealed with pitch and bitumen. The sides of its top were of equal length, 10 times 12 cubits. There were six decks total. Inside was divided into nine compartments. He packed each of the animals from the field to keep them fed, and of course to save them from the flood so that they would prosper once they found land. He also packed up his wife, his family, and the workmen who helped build the boat. All of his treasures of gold and silver were also packed. The city of Shurupak was known as the city of the gods and sat along the Euphrates River where this massive flood would take place. When the rainfall began, the gods of storm, sack, suppression, destruction, and the war god all heralded over the mountains. They pulled out the mooring poles and made the dikes overflow. The gods set the lands ablaze with fire. 
turning to blackness all that had been light. As the flood rose and the rain fell for seven days total, the gods themselves cowered in fear like dogs, relenting the loss of the humans they raised. Ishtar wailed, No sooner have I given birth to my dear people than they fill the sea like so many fish. The humans themselves turned into clay. Utnapishtim wept. He sent three different birds for land, a dove, a swallow, and a raven. The raven never returned. Once the flood ended and land was found, the gods decided that never again shall a flood be used to end humankind. Seriously, they literally thought of everything else that they could have done. A rabid lion, a wolf, famine, anything but a flood. Maybe next time. So Enlil then granted Utnapishtim and his wife eternal life for his service and probably so that they could get a head start with repopulating the earth. Probably. Noah's Ark is the most popular tale regarding a great flood, mainly because of Christianity and its following of millions of people around the world to this day. It starts with God, the big guy, watching over humankind and their overpopulation of the earth. He figures already that he can't handle these humans, they are just doing too much, and he's annoyed. Before I continue, we can't talk about the Biblical Flood without also mentioning the Watchers or the Nephilim. The Nephilim were considered to be hybrids of the children of fallen angels and humans. The Watchers, or the fallen angels, lusted for human wives and came down from heaven to get a little taste of God's creation. They also were responsible for teaching magic, herbology, and many other practices that were either considered secret or quote-unquote evil because humans would learn to put their faith in natural remedies, potions, stones, and false idols instead of the healing power of the faith in God. Just a quick plug here, if you want me to cover the topic of the Watchers and the Nephilim, let me know in the comments below. If you've lurked around my channel, you notice that in some of my videos, you kind of know that I'm not too shy about covering particularly dark subjects or curious topics. So if you need me to throw myself into the disturbing world of fallen angels, comment below and your wish is my command. So anywho, endless sinning commenced and God said screw this and found Noah, a man whom God favored out of everyone within the previous generations of man. So he wanted Noah and his family to be the ones to bring prosperity into the new world. On Noah's 500th or 600th birthday, who knows, he was told by God to gather his sons, their wives, and his wife, and to build an ark that will fit either seven pairs of animals, male and female, or every single animal in pairs of male and female. This story is told in different variations, so bear with me. Anyways, Noah builds an enormous ark, was also given specific measurements, but much larger than the original size like in the Sumerian flood myth, and specific building materials to create this vessel. Once it's completed and everyone is packed inside, the rain began for 40 days and 40 nights. Eventually, the ark was raised by the flood waters, and the flood had lasted 150 days. Noah released a dove, or a raven, and a dove. The dove returned with a fresh olive leaf. When Noah reached land, he released all of the animals, and God spoke to him, saying that he will never again cause a flood to end humankind. It is also said that Noah's salvation through water is the reason we use salvation through water in baptism. Onwards to our next flood myth. The Greek flood is said to be dated by 1460 BC by early scholars. The Greek flood myth is pretty different from the last two versions we've discussed. The most notable is that there was no ark to save all of the animals. They had to fend for themselves or die trying. There's not one, not two, but three total flood myths from ancient Greece. No promises were made in terms of never starting a flood again. The Ogygian flood and the deluge of Dardanus are not as comparable to Noah's ark and the Sumerian flood myth. So for the sake of this video, I will tell you of Deucalion's flood myth. Let's just get to it, starting with why Zeus felt the need to start the flood. Well, leave it all up to one person to screw it all up for the rest of the Bronze Age, King Lycaon. I cover the story of King Lycaon in my werewolves video, but I will do my best to quickly summarize it for you. King Lycaon was a king of Arcadia. Zeus invited himself over for dinner, but disguised himself as a man. However, he introduced himself as a god. King Lycaon tested this claim and served him a young boy on a silver platter, who happened to be Lycaon's son. Mm, delicious! Outraged, 
Zeus turned King Lycaon into a wolf. Afterwards, he stormed off, offended and genuinely peeved, and summed up that the human race was just an amalgamation of discord and savagery, and didn't deserve another moment to live. So the solution? Start the flood to end the Bronze Age. Prometheus had a son named Deucalion. He married Pyrrha, the daughter of Epimetheus and Pandora, the first woman fashioned by the gods. Deucalion, by the advice of Prometheus, constructed a chest. Having stocked it with provisions, he embarked in it with Pyrrha. Zeus, by pouring heavy rain from heaven, flooded the greater part of Greece, so that all men were destroyed, except a few who fled to the high mountains. Pyrrha and Deucalion floated in the chest over the sea for nine days and nine nights, and drifted to Parnassus, and there, when the rain ceased, he landed and made a sacrifice to Zeus. He consulted with Themis, the titaness of divine law and order. He asked how he could restore mankind. There are variations to the story where Hermes appears before them, sent to Deucalion by Zeus and consults them himself. He was told to cover your head and throw the bones of your mother behind your shoulder. What? Deucalion and Pyrrha understood that mother is Gaia, the mother of all living things, and the bones to be rocks. So they threw the rocks behind their shoulders and the stones formed people. Because that's how humans are made, folks. Mm-hmm. Pyrrhus became women, Deucalions became men. It's science. So, I know what some of you might be thinking. These flood myths are savage. How could these chosen few leave everyone behind, and in some cases, everything? But that's just how these flood myths are. There is no shortage of unrelenting destruction and God or the gods are completely merciless against the human race as it was once known. And let's face it, even today, we know that if it was really bad then, it would have to be so much worse now. As audiences of today's world and the worries of tomorrow, do you think that maybe a giant bath with limited means of survival was the answer? Alrighty guys, so a final note. I won't be choosing a favorite flood myth in this video because this has turned into a two-part video in the middle of production. I realized a little bit late that I can only fit so much into a video without making you guys bored out of your skulls listening to 20 to 30 minutes of various flood myths. So part two will be in production. In that video, we will be covering Chinese, Mayan, and Native American flood myths. I hope you like this video because you're definitely going to like the next one. By the way, how about this time you guys tell me your favorite flood myth from this video? Leave a comment below for me, please. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. I'll see you guys next time, and thank you for letting Mama break down the mythos.